Hello everyone, Mrs. Reeve here. I just want to let you know that we are going to be making this origami frog that actually hops. And so I think this might be good for third grade and up, but if you're younger, you can still try it. I'm not sure about that. But I do know that a lot of people like origami. So let me remind you how you can find origami books. So from your Schoology page, click on the library link, you know, just where you see all the specials, you know, RP, music, Spanish, click on library, and then click on this middle words here that say library website. And then let's see, you go over here to this button, online library catalog. And I'm going to type in O-R-I-G-A-M-I. -I. Now I got this from a, one of our library books, Easy Origami. And let me show you, if I say search, you can see what we have. All right, come on, come on. All right, now I'm looking over here and I see that we have 28 books, but we also have, I mean, eBooks, those are eBooks. So if you go to Mac and Via, you can get those there. Or if you want to, so you can do that right now, you know, if, if they're not checked out. Or if you just want a, an actual book, you can click here, just book, or you can say just eBook either way and say include that. And then I can see we went from 63. It's kind of stuck, hurry up here. I know you don't want to, this isn't the main thing you're here for, but just letting you know. Okay, so I'm looking here and I see uh, that's available, the floating origami, origami games, magic. I mean, there's a bunch here to choose from. You look through it and you place a hold. And of course, when you say place a hold, it's gonna ask you to log in. So use your uh, uh, six digit ID number without the S. That's your username and your password, both exactly the same thing. And then you log in. All right, so watch this tutorial and I uh, hope you enjoy yourself Right, to do this origami frog you're going to need a square piece of paper now to get this edge to know where I'm going to cut off I just fold this corner up until it matches up with this side here and I don't really draw this cre crease this right here but I just know that I can cut right down here and that will make my square and if you have origami paper that's already into a square doesn't matter what size it could be 4x4 four four or 8x8, eight eight, it doesn't even matter. Step number one, fold this in half. When you're folding origami in half, it's important to make sure it lines up the best you can make it line up, these corners, and then smooth it out. All right, step number two, fold it in half again. Take the top half, match up these bottom corners here, Fold here, make that smooth. There we go. That looks like a square. Now number three step says to take this and fold it up again. So I'm taking this, lining it, lining it up best possible like that. All right, now some of these steps you're gonna have to pause and do the steps and, and then play it again so you can do the next step. So now we're gonna unfold and unfold again. So we, we really just wanted all of these lines on here. Now step number five says we're gonna take a side and we're gonna fold it down here. Now we wanna match up that corner really well here and pinch it over and then all the way up to get it nice and even. Then we're gonna unfold that part and do the same thing for on step number six with this side. I'm going to put it down here, make sure it's lined up here, and then all the way up. Hopefully that gets you a nice straight line. Mush it down, open it up. Now step number seven is kind of fun here. I'm going to take this, these middle point parts, and I'm going to pull it in. Pull that part in. There we go. And then I'm going to just kind of smush this top part down. Smooth it in. If I kind of rub over it, it will make my creases a little bit more creased. <laughs> Alrighty, that is step number seven. Now step number eight, I'm going to fold this part up again here. Now step number nine, it wants me to fold in. Now this was a little bit confusing at first because I, want, I thought it wanted me to do everything here. You have to kind of lift up, lift up that flap here and then you can fold in this 
just this part, not the whole thing. You're going to flip this over halfway so it's going to be meeting right there in the middle is what I'm aiming for. Get this bottom part lined up here. It's kind of tricky, but I'm going to get this bottom part lined up here and smush it down. Rub it up here. I don't know if you can see if I lift that up what that looks like underneath here. Here we go, and I'm going to try to do that to the other side. Lift this part up. I'm just going to take this half and fold it in. Smooth that out a little bit. Fold it in. And rub that. Get that nice and smushed down here. You like that word, smushed? I like that one. Alrighty, so now I, this looks like step number 10. That's ready to go. Now, I probably could have done a little bit better job matching up here. Somewhere in here, it's kind of hard when I'm looking through the camera here. Now, step number 10, I'm going to fold this bottom half up. You know, and you don't have to be perfect anyway. You just get it as good as you can. Folding that crease down right here. Now, step number 11 here is next. Now, this says you're going to take each corner. We're going to start, I'm going to start with the left corner and just fold that down. Fold it down right here. And it's getting harder to crease because the paper is getting thicker. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this side right here. You know, if you have origami paper, <laughs> it's a little bit easier. But this paper will work fine. You just fold it down. Smush, smush, smush. Okay. That's what that looks like. Now, step number 12 is a tricky step. It says pull out the corners. And I always like to see what the next step is going to be. I look at the next step and see what it's looking like. It looks like a boat. Open it a little bit like this. I don't know if you can see. And now when I pull out the corners, I'm actually pulling out the tips there to smush these. In these are the corners they're talking about. Pull out these corners. I'm going to pull those corners out. And now it looks like a boat. Now that I'm on step number 13, I can see it kind of does look like a boat, doesn't it? Now I'm going to take this corner here and I'm going to fold it down, straight down. And actually there's already a crease there, so this step is pretty easy. Fold this one down, just like that. There we go. Now that looks like step number 14. Now. On step number 14, it looks a little confusing, so I look at number step number 15, what I want to get from this, what I want it to look like. And so I'm going to make little legs. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it out like so. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to just Fold it out like so. <laughs> this is a little bit trickier than I thought it was going to be. If you're following along, maybe you're doing better than me, maybe maybe not. Well, we'll just see. Now, step number 15, I do the same thing. I look at step number 16 and I see, oh, I want some arms here. So I can see where they want me to fold this and where I just fold it up a little bit. Those are going to be the front feet. There we go. I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to just take it a little bit. See at that, that angle right here. So let me show you that what that looks like. Just up and over. Up, just a little piece of it out. So now I've got the front legs and the back legs. Smushing them all out again. Now that's what step number 16 looks like. And it's telling me now to fold this in half, right here at the middle. I'm going to take that, and I'm going to fold it up. Okay, there we go, fold it in half. Now that doesn't look really super even on my part, but on the book it does look more like this side here. That side sticking out. But let's see what that's going to look like. Okay, now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take the top half, and I'm just going to crease that to fold it in half. You see this middle line right here? 
I want to take it and fold it in half. And it's getting pretty tricky with my thick paper. Origami paper, a little bit easier. Okay, smush that down. And guess what? That was the last step. Oh no, no, it's not the last. Not the last step. It does say to flip it over. And guess what? I'm going to make eyes on it. Yay, there is my frog. Let's see if he hops. Let's see. Ah, that was fun. There we go. I like it. Now, these are made with origami paper. A little bit smaller because they are 4x4. Four four. And so, you can put your eyes on that. and have a family of frogs. More. There we go. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I've had fun with this. There we go. Nice. All right, give it a try. Remember, you can always pause and rewatch. Okay, so how did your frog turn out? I don't know how much time you have left because this was like a pause and do a step and pause and do a step. So you might be at the end of your 30 minute time. And if that's the case, then that's okay. You don't have to watch anymore. This is just going to be extra in case you finished a little bit early. So I want to show you how you can actually find some more books for right now. At the beginning of the video, I said how you can go to our online catalog and place a hold and we'll get you some origami books that you can actually read. But if you want something right now, let me show you how you can get to some of our ebooks. So if you know how, if you don't know how to get to our Spicewood Library page here, let me just remind you that you go to your teacher's Schoology page and right where you see all the buttons that say Art, PE, Music, you'll see a button that says Library click on the library button and it will take you to this page right here. So you might pause the video and do that right now if you like, you know, if you have another screen that you can go back and forth or just watch and, and then do it at the end. And then you're going to click on the words library website. And from library website, you're going to find Mac and Via. Now let me move my picture here because it's right underneath Mac and Via. And so down. Make sure you're signed into Spicewood Elementary in Austin, Texas and not um, Spicewood, Texas. And then you're going to put your six digit ID number without the S reminder, no S, and then exactly the same thing for your password. Those are identical. You can copy and paste if you want to and then log in. Now here we have so many fabulous, fabulous books. So I am interested in origami, so I'm going to go up to the search bar and type in O-R-I-G-A-M-I and search enter. Now it looks like we have 105 books. Now we have some chapter books right here. These first ones that you see along here, these are by Tom Engelberger and he is such a fabulous author. We actually Skyped with him maybe 10 years ago, eight, 10 years ago when these books first came out. And uh, he had everybody with a little piece of paper and we made an Origami Yoda together. This was the first book, Origami Yoda. And if you're interested in that, you could read a chapter book and at the end it has the step-by-step -step instructions to make your own Origami Yoda. So that's a lot of fun. And if you like those books, then you have a lot of these to choose from. Now, just a reminder, if you see a little red button by the book that means that somebody else has the book checked out and you can place a hold if you want you just click request and then if you do put a book on uh, hold uh, for a request then go up to the top where it says my profile and then you'll want to change put put something in your notification email i have my email that i check the most often but you can put your parents in there if you want to or if you check on it your email on a daily basis you can put your email there and then just say save and then I'm going to go back here to see all the ones. Now here it says we're seeing the first 25 out of, out of 105 books. So I can go down to the bottom and say load more if I want to see more. So I can look at these choices and go, oh, oh my goodness, there's so many wonderful books to choose from. 
origami dinosaurs, farm animals, insects, zoo animals, pets, birds, all kinds of things. Now, if you wanted to open one of these, you can see when I hover over it, I'm going to get two choices. I can open now, which is a great thing to do. I'll do that as an example. Or you can say check out. If you check out, I like to do that, especially for chapter books or uh, audio books, because then it will remember where you left off. And then you can just continue the next time you log in and click on your book. You would go to your backpack and find your checkouts and then you just open it from there and you can just continue where you left off. Now, if I wanted just to open this book now, I'm going to say open now. Now, when you first open a book, you're going to see all this stuff on the left and you're going to say, all right, this is getting in my way. So just go off and click off on um, somewhere and then that page will go away. Now it looks like I am opening up not at the very beginning, not from the cover. So you see these left and right arrows? I can go back and it will take me to the very front. So there we go, Origami Wild Animals. And I can click here and I can get, I can see if I wanted to go to the snake or the panda, I can click there and it's going to just take me right there to the information. And so this is very cool. And if I wanted to, I could uh, play this book as well, if I wanted it to read to me. Probably not with a craft book, but let me show you how you do that. I'm going to click on, let's see, is it the arrow button? No, it's not that one. Let me click here on the close button. Oh, if I clicked on that, then it opens up this reader down at the bottom, and then I can click on play. 20. Elephant. An elephant's trunk is strong and sensitive. An elephant. Now that kind of sounds like a computer, so hopefully some of the other books sound a little bit more like a person reading them to you. But anyway, you could do step by step. And if you didn't want to see this bar down at the bottom, you just click off of it and it goes away. And even though I don't have my arrows front and back, I can still click and it will take me front and back. I just know approximately where they are. Okay, now I'm going to exit out of this, and you can do that by clicking on the top left button where it says bookmark. Oh, no. I see. I clicked off the book, and this came, came back up. But then I see my three little lines. I click on that, and it will say back to menu. Back close book. I can just close the book. I know there's a couple of steps there, but then I'm right back here at, the, um, at this page. Now, I wanted to show you one other thing. Now, if you go to the online resources right here, this is the fabulous thing about Mac and Via that I just love, love, love. And so if I go over here, I can see book flicks. I can see all these different resources, PebbleGo, True Flicks, Tumble Books, and even an encyclopedia here, World Book. And they have probably Britannica up at the top. Oh yeah, Britannica's here. So you have a couple of encyclopedias. So if I wanted to say open now, I don't have to log in. It, I've already logged into Mac and Via, so now I can log into all of these resources I, uh, just by opening. No more passwords needed. And so for this one, I would click on Kids. And from here, I am going to search Origami. O-R-I-G-A-M-I. -I. Maybe I'm interested now in the history of Origami. See what they say. So here's one article I'm going to click on. And by the way, if you want to read this whole thing, you can. I'm not sure if your 30 minutes has already run out or if you have time to stick around. You can always revisit this if you want to come back and look at, look at this information yourself. So it says, origami is the art of folding paper into interesting shapes. There are about 100 basic kinds of origami shapes, including birds, fish, and flowers. Origami started in China many years ago, but it became, popular, it became most popular in Japan. Today... People in other countries also enjoy origami. Most origami is folded from a single square of paper without cutting. The most common sizes for squares are 6 and 10 inches. The best kind of paper to use is a thin Japanese paper called washi. But wrapping paper or heavy art paper can also be used. Anashi is an origami ornament with pressed folds. And so that's pretty interesting information right there. And if I wanted to... I could click on this and it would read it to me. AW. I'm not going to do that right now. And I could also see these other tabs and there's some pictures, videos, and more, and some more information. Sometimes that's pretty interesting stuff. So I can click there 
and see, well, now it just shows me the picture that they had already before. But sometimes there might be a little video that you can watch. All right. All right. I think that this ends our 30 minutes. I hope that you had a good time. And um, please let me know if you have any questions. Bye-bye.